Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. So today we are going to look at another type of data plot. And this is what we call a scatter plot. Now, I'm not talking about this thing that I've drawn here, but that is this is essentially going to lay the the foundation for what will be our scatter plots. So hopefully this the bottom of this table hasn't been cut off. Hopefully you can see all of the bits of data here now. But scatter plots essentially allow us to represent multiple things at the same time. And we'll see why in a minute. And this involves starting to graph things out on a number line. And it involves us using these marks in, in this case, from the example I have here on this table, as sort of, we can think of them as coordinates on a map. And we're going to visually represent this. And you'll see from this video onwards, a lot of the time, we're going to move to a more visual representation of data, which for me is very, very appealing. Now, I'm going to, next to this thing here, I'm going to draw, and if, if you haven't been exposed to sort of coordinates and graphing things, that's okay. I'm going to run through it quite slowly in this video. So it can be a little bit of a refresher for some of you. And for those of you who have never been exposed to this, it'll kind of lay the foundations for what we mean when we, when we graph things. So give myself as much space as I can here. And once again, sorry, before I go on, this thing on my left, this is my data set. And on my right will be my graph. So when we draw graphs, we can think of this as a map. Now it has these two lines here and here. And this is a classic idea of, of a graph. And if you, you guys may not be um, old enough to remember street directories, but when I was a kid, we had street directories and they had these types of borders and you could locate certain things kind of on, on, the, on the map as you, as you went. So, all we're drawing here is a type of map and we want to show student results from English. Oh, I'll actually change the color. So actually, let me actually color coordinate this just to really help with, with the visual aspect. So on this little line, we call these two lines axes. We'll talk about that more in, in future videos, but we have my English here. And up here, we're going to have my science. So I'm just going to write this as science. And I'm going to write, I'm going to try to show all of these marks in this nice little compact map, this kind of graph that I have here. So I'm going to label, I'm going to go up in these little increments on, on both sides here. So I'm going to label these little things here for, for our different marks that we have. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I think it just goes up to 14 for science. So I can leave that there. And for English, we are going to have, let me move some of this down a little bit. Let me, let me just put in these little markings. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And once again, just to write it here, so we have a nice visual display of all of our elements. 
we have our English marks along this axis. So I want to show each of these students, my students A through to F, as little points on our map. And over the years, as we work, as you work through these types of maps, these graphs, you will see that they can be quite powerful tools. They can be quite significant, but I'll leave you on that cliffhanger, but which you'll get to it all in due time. But now we just want to really keep it simple, right? We want to just show all of these points A through to F, all of these students as points on our graph. So let's start with student A. So student A, get this in blue, scored 10 in English, whoops, scored 10 in English, so 10 here, but 14 in science all the way up here. So I can take my, my student A and say, well, I've got 10 in English, so I'm just going to kind of draw this little dotted line going all the way up and got 14 in science. So I can draw a point that lines up with a mark of 10 in English and a mark of 14 in science. And that will be my student A. So let's look at student B now. Student B got 12 in English and 11 in science. So 12 in English and 11 in science. I could draw a point here for my student B. And you can pause the video and try to find all of these points on your own, but I will just quickly draw the remaining points here. I'll, I'll do them all in blue, but we have student C got 15 and in English and 10 in science. That can be student C. Student D got 13 in English, 13 in science. So that will be roughly here. We also had student E with a 14 in English and a 10 in science. And finally, student F with an 11 in English and a 13 in science. Oh, that's a bit dodgy, sorry. Split that up a bit more. Okay, and we have student F. Now, this what that we've drawn here is essentially our scatter plot. It shows all of the information on my table, but just graphically. Now, what benefit does this give us to, to show this graphically? Well, one thing is that the, I think data is a lot easier to look at visually. For one, I think it makes it a lot prettier, but from some of these points, and this is a very, a, a lot more of an advanced concept that I'm going to teach you just because we're on the topic here, but I can give you an early understanding into this now. This allows us by having this graph of of English marks and science marks, it allows us to observe if there are any trends. Now, to me, it's maybe not necessarily exactly that, but I'm looking at a trend that, well, a lot of the students that did the best at science did the worst in English or may, might have struggled in English. The students that maybe there are a couple of students here that did really well in English. They got 14s and 15s in English, but a 10 in science. So we can start seeing if one thing leads to another, whether there's a type of, the word we will use is correlation, whether one event leads to another. 
Now, looking at this graph, I don't know if we have a strong enough case to say, well, students that are good at science are bad at English or students that like English don't like science and their results show that. Maybe we don't have as strong of a case here because our data is a little bit all over the place. There, there is some data to suggest this, say, for example, these ones, which show a good science mark results, well, not results, but the students who got a good science mark maybe struggled a bit in English. Or the students that got a good English mark maybe didn't do so well in science. Maybe science wasn't their thing. They prefer English. So they studied a little less for science. But we're already at an early level teasing out some of these more advanced concepts. But let me leave it there because I don't want to overwhelm you. But this is, in essence, the idea of a scatter plot. We've taken bits of information here about, we've taken two bits of information from each student, their English mark and their science mark. And we have represented our data set as a graph on the right hand side. So we've taken each of these students almost as a coordinate on a map of these two subjects. So that's all for scatter plots. And in the next video, we're going to look at what we call frequency diagrams, frequency plots, which, as I said before, are going to be an even cleaner way, in my opinion, of representing bigger and bigger sets of data. I'll see you there.